Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. Do you know, saying that is harder than you would think. Sometimes getting your mouth around Believe in the Run can be a challenge. Yeah, let's change the name. Yeah. I Rebrand. Think, yeah, we just did. So uh, write in with your suggestions. This is an exciting episode because what we're going to do is we're not even going to have a guest today. We are wrapping up 2022, kind of doing a walk down memory lane which should be difficult for Robbie because he's cloudy anyways. Yeah, I don't remember much of yesterday, let alone this past year. I'm looking at this list, and I don't even recall Isn't most it of weird the places on here. That stuff's on there that you're like, do you remember doing it? I just can't believe this was all this year. Yeah. Yeah, when I think about the first thing on this list, it literally seems like five years ago. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe in time as we perceive it to be. Are you like that show on HBO where it's a flat circle? Yeah. I always forget the name Matthew of the show. Matthew McConaughey, True Detective. True Detective. Yeah. I do actually agree with that in some ways. Time is, it does move differently depending on the state of, of how you live. Well, like Einstein said. Really high and called the police and was like, time is going really, really slow. I mean, that's an example. Yeah. <laughs> well, Einstein said time is relative. It is. And honestly, he's, I mean, if you just, his simple test would be driving away from a clock tower. So when you're right next to the clock tower, the light reflecting off the clock tower is hitting you at a certain time and you're getting, you know, the your eyesight is seeing the time and feeding yeah. it back to you. The further you drive away from the clock, the more time that it takes to get to you, even if it's, it's a, a milli, milli, yeah, it's still a There's change. a weird thing like that where if you are actually like the more you move away from earth the the longer like time is uh so, so we're in if a you speedy? lived in a tower a mile off the ground you would technically your time moves is actually a little bit longer i believe but it's like so infinitesimal that you couldn't notice it but well if time is based on the spinning of the earth you're further away from the cent- center of the spin yeah, right so that's the idea so do you think like if you went to the core of the earth it's spinning around super fast you only live a day because you're being melted by molten lava. Yeah, that, that would be the <laughs> shortest magma. life ever. Okay, I got a question for you. What's the difference between magma and lava? Magma is more viscous. Magma is underground. Uh, lava is above ground. Yeah. I love that. Magma. Magma. What's All right. What was that from? Awesome Powers? Awesome Powers, yeah. Powers, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. You guys I, love Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, yeah, so should we get into it? What was one of the first things that we did in 2022? Our winter grit party. Oh, man. That was a good one. That is most notable for how cold it was Oof. and how good that Eki Ben tasted. And for breaking every COVID rule in the book. <laughs> oh, that's true. Because we still <laughs> technically yeah. were sort of in the window. Yeah. We kind of, we skirted the window. Like, as soon as they said, masks are optional. Hey, the front door was open pretty much the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's ventilation. We only it had it. freezing. We only had about 100 people inside. Yeah. Packed face to face. Oh, talking and spitting on each like other. A, yeah, it was like a clown car in here. Yeah. Um, but that day, what was the temperature? It was like 14, 15 degrees? Uh, I think it was in the 20, like low 20s. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was it was bitter. Yeah, I mean, it's that's cold. It Wasn't is. it really windy or something? Too? I think yeah. it was, yeah. yeah. I think it had feels in the teens. Yeah. This is why we need to start keeping journals. But the thing that was the most amazing yeah. part about it, well, I have a journal. It's called Strava. I'm sure if you did the run that day, you had the weather and everything. I'm not going to go back but, and check. Um, call it? that was like the first, like, I was kind of wowed by, like, people actually want to come out and yeah. be part of the community and, and run. Like, we were, we were kind of worried that it was going to be a bust. Yeah, because of the temperature and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, free Eki Ben can't beat that. Free Eki Ben, basic sweatshirts. Yeah, and booze. Yeah, and what? How many people showed up? Do you think? Yeah, it was like a hundred. I think it was over a hundred. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more because we it was sold 16 out. Sixteen degrees. Sixteen. Uh, that's wow, what I told you. Right. I told you it was freezing. Feels like five. Yeah, Are that's you it. Me? That's from my and, Strava. And I swear we had wow, about a hundred. 50, 175 people. I don't know why you're asking. I don't know why I'm trying to defend myself <laughs> on what temperature it was. No, I like it. It's, it's a, it's, wait, it's a sense of pride. You're like, no, I, I am very aware of how temp- it was freezing, man. It was cold. So then we did all that winter gr- winter grit was pretty awesome. And then rolled that right into the Donna Marathon weekend. Do you know what I realized by seeing this Donna Marathon weekend? You know how like my hip is hurting me right now? Yeah. I was out for Donna, remember? Oh, I don't. Oh, That's I do because you went, that. you went, you went, you went 
full send on uh, grit in January. Uh, oh, ah, right. yeah. <laughs> you injured yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I didn't warm up into the miles for <laughs> for for winter grit. Yeah. So if well, you're summer grit, I'm a champ. If you're listening, winter grit, sure I'm a chump. <laughs> champ versus chump. Yeah. But that was still cool because Ben Johnson came down and paced Megan in the in the marathon. Yeah, that was a wild weather day too. Dude, yeah. I got epic photos that day. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't think I've ever run in conditions like that. I was thinking about that this morning because I was like, of all the races, that might have been the craziest weather. Like there was 25 to 45 mile per the hour. The wind gusts. was insane. Like you and I was waiting Dude, to take think, pictures of you guys. You were getting blown across the road. No, I think the gusts were even more than that. I think they were like maybe 60. It, yeah. Again, Robbie coming in with the weather. No, report. but I mean, <laughs> 25 to 40 mile an hour, that's not. Not 25 that. might strong. have been the constant. The gusts yeah, were probably okay. closer to. You were getting blown it was around. Crazy. Yeah. You must have gotten a tailwind because you had a PR. Yeah, the tailwind was legit. I thought so. Um, that must have been amazing. But the headwind was not fun. No, incredibly hard. And it was pelting rain. It was just cold enough. We're in Florida. It was just cold enough to make you miserable. Yeah, it, it kind of stopped raining during the race, which is nice. Like it was maybe a little bit, but not like it was in the morning. Yeah. So you kicked ass at that one. Here's my memory of it. Robbie. Sometimes I'm very like punctual and like to be like on time or a little ahead of time. <laughs> Robbie is always coming in like uh, Kramer busting through the door. Pretty much. Throwing his backpack down and coming. So we're getting ready to leave the hotel. I'm like, damn it, where's Robbie? And he finally shows up and then Robbie's you're you're under no stress at all. Yeah. And are you? Are you relaxed? Well, at well the, because I wasn't planning. I wasn't really like didn't have a major goal for that race. Okay. Like, I'm like, okay, we better get to the start. And he's like, ah, I got to go to the bathroom. And so Robbie, like, we at a certain point, I'm just like, we got to go. And Robbie's still in the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, I'd take a dump before the race. You know how it is. It, I, several. I don't know how there's anything in you. There isn't. That's the good thing. Okay. I lose, like, five pounds before the race starts. I don't it's know. awesome. Uh, it takes 20 stops. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, Ben was there. We got to run the 5K with Ben. It was my first time running in the streak fly, which oh, I yeah, love. Oh, yeah, you guys did some videos. He was doing backflips on the beach, yeah, like, yeah. casually. That's crazy. Yeah, he's yeah. I don't. Th he's an android, by the way. Yeah, he, there's definitely wiring inside, <laughs> yeah. inside <laughs> that He dome. freaks me out. He's just, like, so good at everything. Uh, I'll just run a marathon. <laughs> he probably, I wouldn't be surprised if he found some uh, SD cards with data inside of his... Microchips. Yeah. Just, he's probably the, one of the first Neuralink testers right now. So Donna has also been something that we've uh, donated money to every time we do a grit uh, program. I don't know if people are familiar with the race, but it's in Florida, Jacksonville area, Jack's Beach. And for the past, I don't know, five years, we've been donating money. I, I, oh, yeah, donating. And money. I think we've donated at this point over $40,000 because yep. we just did another one from this year's grit. Over $40,000 for them to help women that are going through breast cancer treatment who are uh, struggling to pay their bills and research to finish cancer for good. So they work with the Mayo Clinic down in yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah, it's a really good program. So if anyone is looking for a race in February, check it out. We will be there. Yep. The Cherry Blossom 10 miler. I didn't do that race. I think I was sick. And then, but we, Kafuzi, we did a Yeah, I don't know why you didn't do it. I think I was actually sick. And yeah. I was like, last minute, like, I'm not going to Well, you do came it. down for the group, run. Yeah. And I, uh, it, I remember because your kids were there mm -hmm. and Kimmy was there. I was, like, terrified. They were, I was going to push them into the basin. That was another cold day, man. It was a weird race or a weird run. Yeah, because when you're running around D.C., there's this little, like. It's like a dirt path. Yeah. It's like single track. With along. roots coming out. So <laughs> yeah. when you're running with 40 to 70 people. And it's it was during the Cherry Blossom weekend, so it's packed with. Taurus. Yeah. People were getting a little elbowy. Yeah. But that was a fun workout. That that race though, Meg, you did well. Yeah. I broke sixty minutes for the first time in a ten miler, which I like I said I wanted to do, but I really didn't think I could. And uh Frank from ASICS paced me. Oh, it was right. fun. That was such a hard race for me. Uh I, Max saw me at mile two and he said, you already look like <laughs> shit there. And I was like, yeah, dude. And then I just hung on for the next eight miles. Like it was rough. I don't know why it was so hard. I had a really rough cherry blossom. I want to go back this year. And because it's a, it's a good course. Myself. It's it flat. Is. It's fast. There's really fast people run it. Yeah. I, maybe I just didn't have the fitness for what I was trying to do that day, but 
it was rough. My face was all red. Like, I can't remember the last time my face got that red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Kafuzi's there just doing what Kafuzi does. Yeah. Rather yeah. fast, making it look easy. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's what he does. Brandon and I went to the opening for the track at New Balance. Yep. Which was wild. And Jack Harlow performed, which was. And at the time, he wasn't really anybody, was he? I think he. He was, he was on the cusp. I think First Class had just come out. Yeah. It was kind of like he was getting up there. But. I don't think they could afford him now. For, well, he's like one of. I think it's contra- he was contractually obligated to because he's like a New Balance. Oh, he is? And, yeah, like he wears their stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so he he performed, but it was, it was interesting because he was on the other. They didn't want anyone on the track. It was brand new, of course. So he's in the uh, infield or whatever. And so there's a lot of space between him and the crowd, which is always awkward for anyone performing. So well, especially because it was a small group. Yeah. I mean, there was, it was a decent, okay. like probably a thousand people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but that track, thousand track nerds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen to Jack Harlow. That That's track good. was sick, though. I gotta say, because obviously cool. we went there in August. So Robbie ended up getting hammered and sleeping yeah. with Brandon. I honestly, oh, you well, guys shared just, like a twin bed. Just one night because I had because my flight got canceled the next day. But I spent an entire hungover afternoon trying to get to my airport and then uh. find out my flight was canceled and then get back and it was dude doing that not hungover sucks doing that hungover is, is punishment the worst i thought i was gonna get a cleaning fee in the uber at one point oh no <laughs> but I, i'm glad honestly that that i feel like that was one of those pegs in the not drinking <laughs> like decision where i'm like i just don't want to deal with that it just sucks at a certain point but yeah. then so when you left the next day, uh, Megan and I arrived up there, and we went up to the track, and Brandon actually decided to uh, run, what was it? What, was it a mile? Oh, he yeah. raced a mile. Right. Yeah. It was like and an amateur dude, mile. He kicked ass. Yeah. Like, it was fun to watch. Like, I haven't had, like, it's funny when we went to Worlds, and we'll get to that, but it's not, like, I understand the difference between having a horse in the race and not, and Brandon being on the track. He's your horse. He, he he made it so exciting for me like that. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And they had the lights going so that you could see like the pace yeah, uh, for the thing. And uh, that was cool. he ran out through fireworks and stuff. It was amazing. And then uh, it was just so cool. It made, made the whole event pretty exciting to see Brandon yeah. actually take it on. It was cool. And, and then the marathon weekend, I guess I wasn't there, but pretty awesome group run for me six house yeah we had a huge uh group run with megan featherston we got bagels uh, wait you're forgetting some of the uh, athletes that were there we had emma oh yeah yeah uh lindsey flanagan lindsey flanagan and one other person i can't remember emma bates i got emma um, lindsey flanagan i'm not sure anyway the the group shakeout run was amazing we had again i think close to 200 people uh, running with us for that we are probably going back to do a, another group run with asics this year um we'll find out soon if that's happening but it was just it was so much fun to be in boston boston marathon weekend and i highly recommend it, even if you're not going to run the race it's yeah. just sort of like yeah. the town turns into a running town and everybody who's there is a fan of the sport the entire Newberry Street is pop-ups and brands. Like, it's the best running experience that you can get if you're not in the industry and going to, like, some stuff like the running event or something like that. You get to see all this cool stuff. Yeah, there's giveaways. There's limited edition stuff. There's group runs. There's other kind of get-togethers. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess I haven't really experienced this, so I guess I'm looking forward to doing it this you're, spring. You're going to love, love it. It's just such a fun energetic because everybody who's there who's qualified to run boston like you can tell who's running it for the first time because they are just like geeked up and the people that have run it like a hundred times are wearing jackets from like 1974 (laughs) right right. stuff like that it's just a it's a love fest for running and distance running like it so it's awesome you definitely got to make it there meg and i ran into cure d'amato as i was going to the 5k by the way pro tip if you want to run the 5k Get in the front. Do, do not line up. I lined up. Look, I'm not going to run a 5K at a 6.15 pace. 
I lined up at 615 because I was like, wow, there's a lot of people. If I get past, that's fine. It'll motivate me to run faster. Yeah. Whatever. I, I couldn't get past people. I had to walk like the first quarter mile. Oh, man. Like it was just that thick because everybody who was a walker got up in the front. And <laughs> As one does. There was like six people wide walking and Dude, the street wasn't wide enough like to go around them. Zombie apocalypse. I was doing like that panic in the beginning, like I'm trying to get out there, and you're doing that thing where you're weaving, yeah, all over, and then I just gave up. I was just like, I, Man. I can't. So I just ran it, and uh, but we got a hug from Kira D'Amato that, was fun. that morning, which was great. It was fun to see her, and then you and Meg, I pretty much played bad guy for you guys. Yeah, that was nice that Thomas walked us to the starting line. That morning was a nightmare. Like, I think about doing that again, and I'm like, man, just the buses, like, were late. They got lost. We ended up, like, no time at Athletes Village. Can you kind of describe it? So, like, Robbie hadn't seen this, and he hasn't run Boston. Neither have I haven't run it, but now I've been part of the pretty much the experience between you and Jordan. Robbie, you walk to this park, and you've run in that park with us. Uh You walk, and there's there's a line that's, I don't know, 700 but people there's also like six different lines and you don't know which is the right line and everyone's panicking because everyone's like trying to get on right, the bus right. to get down to the start line like everybody's thinking do oh you actually gonna... have to get on the right bus well all the buses go to the same place that's what i'm saying but, but some people have start times like does oh, it right. matter what time like you yeah get so there? like you're in the first wave so you were supposed to be at the buses at a certain hour if you're in the later ones uh, but everyone it seems like everyone gets there earlier than they're supposed to. So then there's like a backup. And then if you're actually on the first wave and like Megan and I were very casual about it and we showed up in like the last minute of what window right. we were given, which is our fault. But anyway, so you wait in all these lines for a long time and apparently the buses had gotten lost on the way back from the start. Cause they are. Dude, doing I this. love buses getting lost I, in 2022. It every time. It's crazy. It happened to me on the, across the Bay 10 K <laughs> that's a, like literally, you just drive back over the bridge, and that bus got lost on the eastern shore. Well, I will, I will give you some credit for the Boston one. I would think there's roads that are closed, so they probably have to take different route. Yeah, than but they, they got would. no, they got down there fine. Just go back the same way. All right, it's, it's an out and back. I, was I to feel. Them- I bet bus drivers have a like a certain sense of pride, kind of like truck drivers, where they're like, I don't, I know where I'm going. I, don't, I got this. I can handle uh-uh. this. And then two turns later, they're in. Massachusetts or New Hampshire. Wherever we were, like, the bus was going to back into somebody. Like, we were on a bus, and they were, like, the person didn't want to let the bus go by, and the bus was, like, I'm coming. And it... I I don't know. You'd stand there and take that paycheck. Anyway, Megan, I got to stand on the finish line, basically. I I went to the New Balance place the night that you got drunk, the same bar. Yeah, it's a good bar, by the way. Yeah, it's it's about... What's that hotel I'd say it's 50 yards from the finish line. Um, shoot. You even stayed there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, man, we're going to It's about 50, too much time. 50 okay. yards from the finish line. Mm-hmm. And so I, I got to watch all the pros finish. And then, uh, and I got to be right up on the fence. So I was like right on the road. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then finally I got to see Megan and she's cruising in. And I'm like, wow, that that's faster than I expected to be there. <laughs> Nobody PRs in Boston except for Megan. That is insane. And she ran a 248. What was the seconds? How many seconds? 34. 248, 34. Like that just blows my mind. Like there's there's guys that we look up to that were like, that dude is super fast. Okay, but you remember how in New York they made us walk very long ways after the finish line? So Mm -hmm. Boston's very similar where you have to walk. And to where the where I wanted to go, which is where you that hotel you were at it's the wrong direction. You walk for like three quarters of a mile and then you turn around and have to come back. And it's cold after you run and your sweat dries. Mm -hmm. And so, and Danny from New Balance was like, it's going to be the best experience when you walk into this hotel. Everyone's cheering for you. So I was like excited for that. But then I walk in and and everyone and all these New Balance people cheer. I don't know who the hell they are. And like just crack open a beer and hand it to me. And I'm like just standing there and I have no idea where to go. There's like, 10 different doors and I'm just like looking around and I don't they're know if all you remember just like, there's like a little stairway in the back that's like kind of yeah yeah so I like walk into this one area no one's there I walk into another I end up actually walking out of the hotel and then walking back in I get the same cheer and I'm like 
<laughs> I just can someone help me find this party? That's and amazing. then eventually someone walked me up to this, which I never would have found because you take this crazy stairway to this back door. And so I, that's, I'm up there. It's so tipsy. It's, it's called Solus Irish Pub. At, at the Lennox. The Lennox. Hotel. The Lennox, that's, that's it, yeah. yeah. Oh, I also met Bill Nye. That, that's that right, the night. science guy. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a photo to prove it's it. Like, he's just hanging out in the lobby. By the way, if you're hanging out in the lobby with a bow tie on, you're Bill Nye, you're just asking to get yeah. your picture taken. You know what? The, the, you know that was how, cool, though. You know how they discovered Fusion or something the other day? They did something with Fusion. Like in the movie The Saint? Like Cold Fusion? I don't think it's Cold Fusion, but it is important. Oh. Like, And so I tried to understand what they were doing so neil degrasse tyson was doing like a video on youtube and i was just trying to follow along with what he was saying he was talking about protons and magnetic yeah. fields and stuff and i totally he got makes lost. it sound like it's easy to understand but it's he's like you heat it up that's the nuclear or the that's the thermal the nuclear is the molecule and the uh, fusion is the meeting of these two protons and, yeah and he's like and energy shoots out the back if things and i'm like i, I i'm gonna have to devote more attention that i don't know anyway but anyway don't i <laughs> yeah so that was cool back to are we still on the boston marathon uh no that okay, pretty much recaps on. that yeah well also wait it doesn't recap it because we have to talk about the post celebration with megan featherston mm. and um what was it is that where you met mrs space cadet we that? did i did meet her at the bar but i had no idea who she oh, was because okay. like emma who was with new balance at the time was like oh my god it's aaron azar and i was like that's a good impression. <laughs> what was that boy? That is a, boy, that's, that's a teenage I, boy. She's a teenage boy going through. Hey. <laughs> um, no, that's what she sounds like. Um, but anyway, uh, Aaron was there and I'm like looking at her and I'm going, oh, I have no idea who this person is. And Aaron doesn't like everybody else that's a celebrity there is like from East Africa, from, you know, like yeah, an athlete, like, you know. Not an, from freaking coal uh, region of From PA. Pennsylvania. I'm like just looking, I'm like. And then someone's like, "No, you got to watch her videos; they're hilarious." So then I got on the Aaron tip, and uh, it, it's all history from there. But Megan and uh, what's her name? Um, we who, met Kathy Dirks. Kathy Dirks, yeah, who was a lot of fun. Who had just run what a two Oof, twenty like, something? No, like a two thirty four, maybe two thirty four. It was very fast. So after that, um, our next trip was off to San Francisco with Solomon. Oh yeah, yeah. This was kind of like a bizarre trip because. It was so short. It was so short, but we did so much. And it also was like, it's not a race. This is the one that doesn't feel like it happened this year for me. I don't know. <laughs> we how, ran over the Golden Gate. I don't know how we felt. That, that was super cool. We I, hosted a run out of... Um, the Golden Gate run was the mind. highlight. Yeah. I didn't realize that it was... I guess I knew it was foggy there a lot, but I didn't realize it was very uncommon to have a clear day. Is that correct? Like running across the bridge you in know, the morning? I don't I, I think there's as many days as there are foggy days, but we happened to hit one of each. So yeah. on, the, on the day that we ran over the bridge, crystal clear, beautiful weather. I mean, it was probably like 60 degrees and just sunshine running over the bridge. And then the next day we did a, a run out of runner's mine. After we did a speakeasy event at a bar drinking whiskey until I don't know how late and eating pizza in the middle of the night with Danny. That was a good Forgot time. Forgot about that. I actually paced myself that <clears throat> night, which I was pretty proud so of. So see, it's moderation that you need to worry about. <laughs> yeah, that was like the one day in the last year. Uh, but it, that was a good time. And Noah Drotti was there. We did a video with him, interviewed Ricky Gates. I think that uh, be, that first impression video you did with, with Noah was one of the best. Yeah, we need that to do, was good. We need to do more of those with some athletes. Yeah. And stuff. I think that you know how we're pulling some clips. That one needs to be pulled. Um, what else do we do? Yeah, just like a group run, and then oh, you and went to the favorite bookstore that you wanted to go to. Yeah, City Lights Bookstore. That's yeah, oh, and that you went for time. a run in Oakland while we were waiting for our plane, which I was like, no, that again. was a different time. That was come back from Worlds because we stayed. Oh, God. Remember See? we s you we stayed for Beta Breakers. So Robbie went on oh, vacation right. and we stayed for Beta Breakers. Yeah. I we, went up to We did the dumbest thing. We did Beta Breakers and we ran back. Oh right. So it was like a 14 mile run or whatever. And you had whatever. a flight that day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why we had to get back. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's that is a dumb Cause thing. Cuz we ran and we ran at a pretty good pace and we saw Ricky Gates out there. Um and we interviewed him 
while we How were out there. How many dongs did you see on that run? I didn't see enough. See, we were too far in the front to oh, see the crazy. Gotcha. Yeah. I only saw there was one black guy that was dressed up as Santa Claus who had a, an appendage on hanging I off did his see thing, him as like well. a fake. Uh, I think it just there was. Some, it was like a sock. A very minimal coverage, oh. if you will. But you meant like enhance an enhancement thing. I mean, I don't know. It was chilly. A prosthetic, morning, but. <laughs> him and then I ran next to a guy who's playing Guy Catchem from or what's Catchem's name the one from Pokemon who's a kid oh um I mean, anyway I yeah he was dressed up as him but with a speedo on that was and I ran with him for a while he huh. was a nice guy um but yeah we ran all the way down and you're kind of pushing it because it's a race and the, it's a pretty hilly race yeah and uh so I finished I'm pretty exhausted and i'm like well we could just get a ride back or get an uber and megan's like no let's just run and i was like well maybe we run uh back till we're out of the race and then we get an uber and then we got to that point they're like well let's just keep running so we ended up running all the way back and i was like exhausted yes. thomas is still mad about it in case you can't tell no i'm glad we did it but it's ash catch him ash catch him yeah yeah but it still sounds like a good time even a, or a good experience it, it was, was for sure i would definitely if i was out there at that time again i would definitely do it yeah yeah i went up to orcas island in the san juan islands off the coast of washington for my 40th birthday that was pretty fun did you see an orca <laughs> no i by the way they have a whole scam going on there i found out by listening to an, uh, an audio tour and that like there was a cd in the car we rented it was just an audio tour of the island became very into it after a while they explained that the island is named after the guy who founded it. like by coincidence this person's last name was orca or orcas <laughs> did he change his last name because nobody's named orca i've never met uh, in my entire life never met but they have a whole scam going John on orca. because all their stuff is sold with orc you know comes to killer whales yeah and you can see them but it's like on the island next to it really it's not even really around orcas island which is garbage so anyways, didn't see any, but it was beautiful up there. So that was, it was still a good time. Um, yeah. Anyways, and then we rolled into what basically the ASICs uplift or, yeah. or is it, was it? We Basically started the, the uplift tour. tour. Yeah. 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 Which was, was New, York, New York, City. York City. Yeah. And again, that, I mean, how many runs have we done out of uh, Columbus Circle and we still don't know the route around uh, uh, Central Park? Oh, I mean, Central Park has so many trails. It's like going I know. trail running in. That's the one thing. If we do one this year, we have to get a map and give I people the map. I know at this point. No, but I want to be able to hand oh. runners, like if they're out there and they're not going to run the same paces as everybody else. Yeah. I don't know if people know how to read maps anymore. Definitely not. Well, Maybe what do we do? Just give a GPS? Yeah, you just create Honestly, a route on yeah. Strava right. and you share it. You share the link. I like that. I don't think anyone would do that either, but there might be one person. You know how people used to get lost in... You know those hedge mazes, yeah, and just they just die in there. That sounds skeletons good. would be in there, yeah. At least in Where's Waldo books, that's what happened. But I feel like that's probably happened in Central Park, and nobody even knows. They just didn't make it out. Yeah, there that's, could be somebody on that group run that we just don't even know about. That's still doing laps. They're like, hey guys, no, they just they're gone. Like they couldn't find food or anything. Yeah. So the A six. Um, uplift tour started off were we promoting i guess on the back of the truck you could see the nova blast three but it wasn't out yet yeah, we were running yeah. it because we're special i guess it was kind of the meta speeds and the nimbus light and the uh what nimbus 24 are you sure you had we had the nova blast three at that no that early? i don't think so and we were all running in the meta speed sky because if you remember all of these shake quote unquote shakeout runs we were all running like <laughs> sub eight minute pace and we were like why are these group runs so fast and it's like because you just gave everyone super shoes yeah oh that is true yeah we did the in dc when it the tour came yeah. down to dc that was like our <laughs> yeah. last day and i was tired we had done like three days in a oh, row man that was ridiculous and we go to dc in the evening and Robbie and I are wearing the edge. You're wearing the sky. Yeah. And we do a DC group run, and the average pace was sub eight. Dude, they went out of like 715. Oh yeah. My Everybody's what, just like, what is happening? Well, and it was like a workout because we had all those stoplights in DC. So people would like sprint and then stop and then sprint. And I'm like, what? I thought this was a group run. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, we do need to be more conscious of that in the. It wasn't our fault, though. We I know, but again. in the upcoming year, we should 
maybe figure out, hey, we need to have, you know, a wider spread of, yeah. of paces. Yeah. So we will, we will work paces. on that for you. So don't be, don't be thinking that you're not fast enough to come. We will make sure that uh, everybody is included. But that was cool. New, so New York, D.C., Uplift Tour, and then Summer Grit Party, another good time. Which was, it was kind, kind of, like of part a, of the part Uplift of the tour. tour. They yeah. brought the van. Oh, that's right. We also did the Baltimore 10 mile right before that. So the, Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that's that. That's true. Stuff. The Uplift van was there. Yeah. So, uh, which I won the relay <laughs> with Jarrett, and uh, it's kind of a caveat because I, I did run five miles out of the 10, but just not. And then abandoned Jared yeah, in, his, in his time of need. Just not like the whole, the right way that you were supposed to run it. Um, yeah. No, I just, I'm, and then Megan was chasing people from the back. That was so much fun. And how far do you think you get in before Megan caught you? I thought I would get like six, like like six you're, or seven miles in. We were at the start. And Megan had to finish behind everybody she had to start. And it was 3,000 people. Yeah. You start at the very back as a chair because you what, you pass people when you get charity money. For yeah, a dollar for every person I pass. So legitimately at mile one, I don't know, 1.5, there goes Megan. I was, honestly, I was a little pissed. Well, it was funny because I. Like, it was ridiculous. When I decided to turn around and run back to, to the uh, van, I turned around. And within like feet, I saw Megan and and Chris Hogger, yeah. and I was like, "Whoa, they're coming!" And like, I was like, "Holy crap!" It was so much fun to run past people and just be like, "Dollar, dollar, dollar." And did you say "chiching" every time you passed? Someone? I did until I got really tired at the end. That's pretty <clears> cool. You, next time, you should bring like a, a belt, like a. We thought sound about device. it because Chris was running with me to sort of help, like get me through the crowds in the beginning. Which it turns out, I have that we didn't really runner's need. bell. I do. I I, Wait, I don't is, know where it is. That's anymore. a thing. Yeah, it's a two two ring bell. So you put it on your knuckle here, and it has a little spring. It's just to notify people, your like a it, bike bell. Yeah, yeah, and it is so loud. It's a real thing. Oh, um, that's actually not a bad idea. Eh, until you use it, and you're like, oh, this is annoying as hell. Um, but the the greatest thing was that Megan wasn't in the official results, but you finished second place all the way from the back. Like you were the second woman to cross the finish line. Yeah, but it didn't count. Wait, why didn't it count? Because I was the charity runner, so I was kind of pulled from the official results. But didn't you have a bib? Yeah. But they gave the another fast ambassador. Was it Nicole? Yeah. Uh, who who got second place? So, but I mean, that's just crazy to me. If you start the that first, is crazy. The first place winner started all the way at the front. Yeah. Megan starts all the way at the back. And comes in second. Were you second Only, in the race yeah. or ta- chip time? No. no, I think it was chip time. Oh, I thought it was in the race. I don't think. I don't I remember. I mean, that's probably true because the I race goes out in, race. Like, what, five minutes? So yeah. That's probably not that crazy. I think you were second in the race. Wow. And the thing is, I think there wasn't that much difference between you and first place even. I think yeah. you may come well, in. Well, the goal for 2023, to write it down. There Start at go. the back and win it. Yep. Yeah. Um. So that was cool. It, again, we had our summer grit party at mob town brewing that was crazy that was a good time we had a live band a lot of fuzzies burgers those burgers i need to get some again crappy weather for that one yeah yeah but we had ben johnson kafuzi drew wickham like the gang was out who else was there there i think tom feathers did tommy come out feathers uh i don't i don't think so Okay, yeah, feathers. But remember we ended, so it was a long day because yeah, with the run started, I don't know, 8 a.m. or something. And then, you know, we had some beverages at the brewery. We had our own custom beers. I had to yeah. coach a coach a t-ball game in between there, too. Ugh. Yeah. Kids suck. <laughs> and then <laughs> we probably we ended thing. the night at uh, Waltz. Yep, Jello oh, Shots. I forgot Jello shots. about Waltz. Jello Shots and karaoke. Yeah, Robbie had a good sound. He he picked good songs. I have to say, I picked songs I liked that didn't play very well <laughs> to the crowd. Go over well. But Robbie picked good songs that uh, played well to the crowd. Like you wanted to sing along with Robbie. Yeah, I, I mean, I love karaoke. I wish I'm a little bummed that Ben Johnson or Kafuzi didn't do it. Like, come on, I get in on that. I think Ben Johnson actually <laughs> would have a great singing voice because it's got that deep baritone. Mm-hmm. Like it probably, probably, probably little rock it out. Frank Sinatra. Yeah, or Johnny Cash maybe. Yeah, I wonder why uh, they chose not to sing. It wasn't like there was a huge crowd there; like it's just us. Some people just are. I used to be like terrified of it, and really? then and once I did it, I'm like, oh, this is cool. 
don't know. Like, I, for real. I'm yeah. not, I didn't do it because, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I could see you. Seems scary. It is? It, it, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. It is. I don't think it's scary. Making a fool out of yourself isn't scary. I, for a lot of people, I think that's very scary. But that's why <laughs> that's why it's at a Jello shots bar. Oh, so yeah. And I can, ate those gummies that were, like, once she told me she made them in her house, I almost wanted to throw up. Basically, like, bathtub gin. Yeah. And you know she has, like, ten cats at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd she's probably smoking cigarettes as she's making 1, them. One thousand percent. Oh yeah, that's what make get a little nick in there. <laughs> no. Makes it addictive. You can to use them. the uh, the uh, grain soaked uh, gummy bears as uh, nicotine patches. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm surprised you have didn't get addicted to cigs after that. But anyways, so that was that was cool. And then we did. We went the, off to worlds. Yeah, worlds. Was that wow. that fast? Like, were we at worlds that quickly? Uh, you, you did some I, vacation yeah, stuff in between. We went to uh, Lake Tahoe and Charleston and yeah. then to Eugene. The running in Lake Tahoe was some of my favorite this year. That was cool. Yeah. That sounds we cool. did a couple really beautiful trail runs. Um, we ran along the lake at one point. It was just, it was, it's gorgeous. I mean, it was yeah. great. I met that guy who's doing the two day, 48 hour oh, yeah. or 200 mile race around Tahoe. So it's like the from rim, Hawaii. Along the rim of the I lake. guess so. It's they like we were running on their course. Yeah. And these guys look like and this was the first twenty four hours. But the weird thing was it was going from like twenty degrees oh, yeah. in the at the night with snow to seventy five degrees in the afternoon. Yeah, that's that's a lot to deal with for sure. Like your body's gotta get beat up, but it was cool. And then uh yeah, I guess we came back. And we went to Worlds, which was a trip that, like, kind of seeing the that was really Taj cool. Mahal of of running. It was the Tahoe 200, FYI. That was it, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so World Athletics got there. Man. The travel was insane. Travel was crazy. I still have to cash in that Southwest voucher, 200 bucks. You oh, should. We've used that oh, for sure. Um, I got to watch uh, Lord of the Rings on the tarmac of Las Vegas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched movie. an entire movie while we sat in the tarmac. Yeah. But we got there, and A6, I have to say, put on a first class, uh, yeah. like, scenario for us. Like, the area that was at the university that was all the uplift house, I guess they called it. But, like, it, it had ping pong tables, it had pool tables, it had. Did it have pool tables? Uh, no, it had ping pong tables. Yeah, Maybe video know. games, stand up video games. It, there was stuff. Yeah, it was, food every day. I think they had air hockey, yeah. not pool tables. But the whole thing was, it, and it was just, it was like in a theater area. It was just great. I just had so much fun. And every day we did runs and we were in the middle of grit. And so I was like, I think we did like a 17 mile run, a 14 mile run. And like, a, we, it was a lot, man. Cause we, yeah, just the 17 mile run to start out. On Pree's trail, I took you up to that mountain that Meg hated. Sorry. Yeah, that was so dumb. It was awesome. It, it was, was a, stupid. It was like a corkscrew like no, road to the top. There was like no view up the, there. That was the problem I had with it. It was. It was. I mean, it was a as good of a view as you're going to get in Eugene. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was disappointing. Pree's trail was mm, okay. Very we, underwhelming. We already talked about this. Yeah. Yeah. Most overrated trail of all 1, time. One thousand percent. Dude, it is. It is. But you know what made it kind of cool. I would say that when you're running on a trail and because it was World's Weekend, like you're running past Matt Centrowitz, you're running past, you know. Uh, Cole Hawk or. Yeah, like we ran like, past so many like like stars of running. That no, it, that was cool. But it wrecks your shoes. You're, you're They're destroyed after one time on that run. I mean, I threw my Nova Blast in the wash and it seemed to take care of them, but yeah. They were shouldn't have trash. to shouldn't have to yeah um Wrecked. it's basically you know tan bark which you know is that, the worst surface to run on in the world do you know that it was like resurfaced for worlds no that, that bad decision <laughs> i don't know who's did that probably nike no it was that, that apparently there's a philanthropist who lives in the area who uh donates money to so nike. Make, make i was gonna say so and, so nike <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> i mean it was still beautiful the weather there's like crazy remember it was 50 degrees in the morning in july i was like how is this happening it was, it nice. was gorgeous it's a reason why it's a huge running community it is the perfect conditions for running yeah <laughs> <laughs> that actually is true but hayward field 
It was hard not to get like warm fuzzies when you walk in there. It was just like, it's huge. So for starters, it's so big that you're like. Like for running. This place is for running. Yeah. Not for football or whatever else, just for running. That's crazy. Yeah. I actually think when the first day we walked in was the most impressive part to me, like just like blowing my mind how big it was and how cool it was. And we happened to have insane seats, like we were right on the track. Yeah, I felt a little guilty about that. Yeah, and then we had like, uh, <laughs> like we, were, no joke. we were drinking beers and you're in the this. sunshine and it was just amazing. Oh, and we had the good side too. Yeah. Like in there the was shade. the shady side and the and the sunny side and it was hot. It was yeah. like laser gun on the other side. <laughs> yeah, because one afternoon we did sit on the sunny uh-huh. side and yeah. we I had a sunny side up ahead after that. But then we got <laughs> a, a actual private tour of Hayward Field. That was just yeah. us. We... We ran, we sprinted a 100-meter race between you, me, Brandon, and Kafuzi. Some, some people sprinted. <laughs> yeah. I Dude, just filmed I ran, I ran quickly as I could. <laughs> I, I pulled every muscle that has ever existed in my leg. It was kind of I, amazing. No I, joke, for four days afterwards, I could barely walk. Here's how far behind I was. I didn't know that Robbie had won. I thought Kafuzi had won. So I was like, oh, you know, this, you know, I guess you feel pretty good. You won that. Kafuzi, I didn't win it. Yeah. So I robbed you. I said, well, Rob, technically yeah. branded it, but that doesn't count. Oh, yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. I meant out of mortals, <laughs> yeah. of people over 20. I actually <laughs> thought I could run a lot faster, <laughs> but I think the miles on my leg from Summer Grit, I went out there and I was like, I felt like I, you know, when you have a, do you, do you ever driven stick shift? Yeah. You like, know, when you have first, it the like, wrong, three cars, I okay. freaking miss it. I wish I could have another you, stick shift. You know, when you city? accidentally start in third gear instead of first gear? Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> and you like, you just lay on the gas hoping yep. that it'll catch up to the gear. Yeah. That's how I felt when we, when we did the 100 yard sprint. Man, now you made me, now I'm just going to think about how much I want to stick shift again. My Jeep Wrangler was stick shift. Yeah. I loved it, but not in the city. Yeah. I mean, city definitely sucks yeah. for stick. I don't care who you are, but. I just found the only time I hated it was when I was on the highway uh, yeah. and it's like in traffic. You stop and go. Oh, yeah, and you're like, Nightmare. dude, your left leg hurts yeah. by the end of the hour long trip. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, I feel like there was one more thing about worlds that I wanted to talk about. You went up to Pre's, like the. Oh, Pre's Rock was cool. Pre's that Rock. was, I wish you guys could have went on that. That was a. Uh, well, we didn't know you were going before the shakeout. Well, it or was we probably like, would have gone. We had, you were on the other side of the city, which is weird. Yeah. yeah. And then it was just, that, there was no time to fit the house, in. The house was the wrong move. We should have just all been in the yeah. hotel. Or in one house. Area. Yeah. Or, or the hotel, yeah. so you each had your own toilet. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, the hotel was great because it also had breakfast. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I ate while I was there. I don't remember much. It's good to eat. We Yeah, we had the dinners with Asics every night. That it yeah. started at like oh. 8 p.m. because that's when all of the events were done. We kind of did. Like, There's, but then we had to be up at like 5. We did that. And then we came home. By the way, when we were in Las Vegas airport, does that count as me visiting Nevada? Because that's one of the four states I haven't visited. I don't count those Like because I, I went to, I've been in the Dallas airport and I don't consider I've been to Dallas. I thought maybe since we had a long lay over on the tarmac and i played we played a slot machine that that would count but i, kinda, I think you can count it i mean I, it's up to you I'm kinda i kind of feel you. like i'm with you airports are this weird like not it's like a no place what do you call it when it's in the uh, middle of an ocean like no country not no country for old men no man's land yeah but there's like another word for international Wait, never, waters. international i think that's you've what never been to vegas no Oh, wow. I've never been to Nevada. Nevada. I, have, I have not been to Vegas as an adult. Mm-hmm. Last time I was there, Circus Circus was a big deal. I don't <laughs> I don't have a desire to because Atlantic City, I hate. Um, I went for my 21st. Yeah. It was. See, I'm past it. Yeah. It's like. That's I, the only time you should I think there's go. a window. Like, you either have to be above 60. Or into gambling. Or being a girl that likes getting drink spot for you or something. Yeah, if you're a female, you don't buy anything. I guess if you're very into drugs and stuff. I think that would be a good time. <laughs> I don't, I, it just to me, like, there's no appeal to, it's like dirty Disney. And I'm just going to lose a lot of money, so yeah. why, why would I do it? That's the craziest thing about the gambling thing. I just can't, like, 
I get there's an upside, but it's not like a big enough upside for me to be like, oh, I could put this five dollars in and get five dollars back. You yeah, know, it's like. Mm. I mean, I don't mind playing blackjack sometimes, but as soon as I'm up a hundred bucks, I'm just good. Yeah, <laughs> like that's it. Uh, so then we ended up going. That was worlds. That was awesome. We went to, and then we went to started doing train to train to NYC. Yep. Yeah, which ended up being super fun. That was a wild time. It was that whole three months. Uh-huh. We did. Everyone. We did the Bronx. We did. Uh, well, we did the training lab in Boston. Yeah, that's that right. Was, that kicked it off. Yeah, and that was unfortunate. You missed out on that. Yeah. I think you would have had fun. Yeah, I got to go do that one day. Go do all the VO2 testing you guys did. It looks cool. And their lab just looks cool. It, it was like a playground for runners. Like, there's a cold room. There's a, you know, the lab testing equipment. You got your feet measured. You got your body scan. You did VO2 testing. They had a machine that is one of our highest reels of the year of just a <laughs> shoe getting bounced up and down. Yeah. Compressed. Yeah. That you cold. guys are monkeys. I don't understand what's going on. That cold room, though. What was the cold room for? They can turn turn it any temperature, any humidity, or no humidity. That With you like a want. treadmill in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's in the hands of the wrong person. It could go to go bad. You lock that door and crank it down. I, I've seen movies. We like could that. have done all sorts of like challenges that would be interesting like we could do a youtube challenge consent you run 24 hours it's like a mr beast like yeah. dream room <laughs> dream yeah but yeah that was cool and then uh yeah we did the bronx which well, was a lot of fun why why did you miss out on the bronx the bronx originally i was going to do erie marathon before that um and so it was like the week before so i was like i'm not gonna be running a 10 miler right after that but then obviously that fell apart but before that you guys went to falmouth and i was in disney oh uh, yeah. Yeah, you skipped over Falmouth. Falmouth. That was, race that's always so hot uh, and so hard. I actually it's probably the shittiest <laughs> most fun. Fun that yeah. you can have. Like it was I was you know I love hills. Yeah. It's super hilly. Wait, do you No, I hate oh, hills. Oh, saying that. I was being a uh, sarcasm. <laughs> um the uh it it was super hilly. It was super hot, super humid. Like yeah, it was a struggle. It's in the dead of August. It's literally at what August nineteenth, twentieth. Yeah. But you jumped in the water afterwards. We which and I was jealous. I got to tell you, so foolish that we didn't do it the year before. I don't because know why we didn't. It was so nice. Um, we all splashed around the water. It, it, it was Kafuzi. It was the team from Running Warehouse. Uh, we all jumped Sounds in. Sounds like an OnlyFans content. It was. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. saw Connor with his shirt off. He probably could have um, made some ca- extra cash <laughs> on the back end of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tommy was there. Everybody was in the water. And we were just splashing around having a good time. Plus, we were loaded up on Trulies like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. So nobody was feeling too much yeah, I mean, you're hydrating while... Hydrate your skin was okay. hydrating in the water, and you're hydrating with seltzers. Again, right. the seltzers are not hydrated. And I don't I, understand. Oh, can we get? You need to get an alcohol expert on the podcast to talk I, about that. No, we. It's just science. Alcohol does not hydrate you. But it's not just alcohol. It's bubbly it's water. Bubbly water. <laughs> okay. It, it's a mixture. Um, I, I think like. But if, you would die feeling refreshed if you're in the desert. I feel. Yeah. I feel okay. like though, like a a martini. There's a big difference between a martini and a martini with club soda. Exactly. That's that's just a vodka soda. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, getting, there's a big difference. You have to be getting more hydration and Well, you are because Yeah, that's okay. what the, that's what we're going at. I'm saying it's a better like you're kind of getting hydrated. You're not actually, but it's better than the alternative of straight yeah. liquor. <laughs> of I don't know. Or of no water. Any other drink. Um, so w- I think we're going back to Falmouth this year. And from what I've heard, we're going to be able to take more faster bastards because this year we had like, I don't know, 10 faster bastards up there. Yeah. And they had a blast. And like we were kind of doing work, so we didn't get to hang with them. So we were at the headquarters at, at, in Boston for ASICs while they were having a good time on the island. They were out on, what's the name of the island? Cape Cod. Is it Cape Cod? Th- that's where Falmouth is, yeah. Okay. On See, the Cape. I'm going to get yelled at by Danny again. Um <laughs> It's on the Cape. Anyway, the, so they were out there having a blast, maybe p- playing pickleball, drinking tequila. But those guys threw down. Like, yeah. They, they crushed Matt Kacharski and Chris. You, and you might have to do a lottery Gavin. system because 
there's probably going to be a lot of people oh, yeah. get in on that. Yeah. Well, it could be, you know, who just wants to be the nicest to us. That's a, yeah. <laughs> do, get them to do volunteer work. Yeah. At our office. Hey, grit packing. It's coming up. <laughs> it's not, you should like, you know how New York city yeah. for the marathon, you can volunteer. qualify for six volunteer or run the six races. Yeah. Like if you come, if you volunteer at these six different events, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Robbie's on to something. So the next up or the next event that we did was the, the Bronx, Bronx. Ten Miler. Now I had a lot of fun at this one. I don't know about you. I did. It was a lot of fun. That was like my first experience with the big crew since I missed out on the lab testing. So it was fun for me to get to be with everyone. Well, except for you, Robbie, for the train to NYC. So we got up there on a Friday, I think. Was the race on a Sunday or a Saturday? Or did we go up on Saturday? The race was Sunday. I think it was Saturday, Sunday, yeah. We took the train up, which was fun. We met uh, Featherston there Yep. with the team. Um, but it... You know, was Ashley there? Ashley wasn't there, right? It was no, just, because she was doing Berlin. Yeah, uh, but the the vibe was awesome. We had a great time. Um, it was a really hot day. We ended up because we were all training for New York City. We made it a long run, so we ran to the start of the Brooklyn Ten Miler from our hotel, which I think was five miles, six miles, six miles. Do you say Brooklyn Ten Mile? Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. that's all right. Bronx, and then yeah, we did the race, which was way hot, hillier than I was expecting, and super hot and. Not many spectators out there, but yeah, it was kind of weird because you're fun. like in New York, and I was expecting like mm. people, and yeah. it was sort of a quieter race. But what was cool is it's like in the shadow of Yankee Stadium, the diversity and the groups running in New York are unlike anything else. Like it has a gritty feel, it has that kind of like city wide feel to it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I ran with Brandon the whole time. Nice, we took a bunch of uh video footage it was fun yeah cool and then you did oh my gosh and then you did the yeah. london marathon <laughs> yeah I, don't, I still don't understand why you guys do this to yourselves it was my favorite <laughs> I, I think it might be my favorite marathon uh, looking at the schedule i know i did a lot of stuff in between too but this is not traveling to london that was probably my favorite thing of the year yeah the london marathon was amazing i mean i love the city the event was awesome. It was not a PR day for either of us, but it was just a really fun, a fun environment. You know, it, it's funny because it, for me, I ran a pretty flat race, but I feel really good about that one, even though it's not a PR. It's not even, you know, it wasn't even um, in my top five or, or anything of marathons as far as time. But the course itself, the vibe, what you saw along the way, Certainly, like coming through the gates of, um, I don't know what the name of the park is, but leading up to Buckingham Palace, it's it's just majestic. It was awesome, and the way that the city treats you after that the marathon the is it. There's nothing else I've ever experienced like it. Like we, like I was joking, we were leaving our hotel room, and I was like, we should bring our medals. And Megan was like, I don't want to bring my medal. I'm like, just bring it. if we want to take a photo or something later. Yeah, we'll have it with us. Meanwhile, at restaurants. You had your medal, free burger, free beer. Oh, you have your medal? We're booked right now, but we'll seat you right away. Like, it was just insane. You were like royalty with a medal. Is uh, is Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory in London? It should be, but I don't think so. Oh. Why is that? It would be, I bet you could get in there with it. Yeah. Oh. On race, after but race. you probably lose your medal. Like, you put it in, and it comes out like a piece of chocolate. Put it in the Wonka Vision, you get a tiny little That's uh, it. quarter medallion. size medal. Yeah. But it, it was just the best. I, I mean, you run past the Cuddy Sark, so you see like a big clipper ship. And is that a, is that? Did you ever get into that Cuddy Sark? The liquor? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I've had it. Is that I more of a know. British thing? Is that no, something I, your dad drank, Meg? Mm, no. No. I think it's just whiskey, isn't it? I think so, but I didn't know, you know, why it was popular. I think because of the ship. It looks cool. It does. And then like w what we like to call. I like to call it the London Bridge, but they call it Tower Bridge <laughs> over there. You call it what you want to call <laughs> yeah. it. It was awesome. Anyway, and the start was cool. Like, tons of we met tons of fans. We did a huge shakeout run with Tracksmith, which was awesome. Like, we didn't know how many people would even show up to that. And 40 runs. That's where we met Chris Ford. Yeah, yeah. Chris Ford. Um, he was tons of fun. Yeah. And it, it was just such a great trip. Yeah. I thought. Anyway. Yeah. So that was awesome. And we did 
bottom running festival. We skip over that. <laughs> that was a good time. It's Brandon always- ran as part of the Under Armour Flow Elite team, which was very cool. We just followed along and videoed it. Luckily, we didn't have to I love run. that stuff, though. Like, when we're running around taking photos and <laughs> yeah. pictures, we got press passes. It was fun. Yeah, yeah it was, it's always a good day. It's like a holiday for running in Baltimore. And then we rolled that into the New York City Marathon with New Balance. Bum, 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 the culmination bum. of our train to NYC. And that shakeout run was something insane. Yeah, that was definitely one of the highlights of the year. Dude, we had over 500 people for a shakeout run. New Balance did a first-class job with the setup for the coffee, beers, They had an open bar at the end. Yeah, uh, they were giving away fanny packs that were co-branded New Balance and and Believe in the Run. We had other stuff they were giving out, uh, glasses that lit up. There was an area to take pictures. You got to meet everybody. Who was there? I mean, you had Kafuzi, Aaron Azar, Laura Green, all the people on our team Mike, for Mike Run and NYC. Yeah, Mike Wardian. Mario Frioli. Mark, yeah. Lindsay Hine. Lindsay Hine. Yeah. Keep going. There's just a shite hunt. Yeah, we're probably missing someone. Everyone who's anyone. And the run was so much fun. It was perfect weather. It was like 70 degrees. But like for a three mile, 70 degrees is not that bad. Right. <laughs> and uh, it was actually nice. It was like summer again. And we we're running through the Central Park. But then. It makes for a challenging marathon. Yeah. Then the marathon came the next day. I mean, we talked about it. Yeah. We did it. Do we do a recap of that? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. You go watch the video on YouTube. Yeah. But it was it was it was warm, yeah. <laughs> Challenging to say the least. It makes me like I think we might be going back this year if we want to. Okay. And I'm kind of like, do I want redemption at this? I've run this thing twice. Okay. I ran it completely wrong the first time and just blew my legs out. The second time we ran it, it was in this heat. I mean, it, the atmosphere is just. I never experienced anything like it. If we do I mean, run it in the fall, I am only doing hills. Like, oh yeah it it i don't care if it's just loops in patterson park okay here's what i don't i was thinking about this a couple of times this past week everyone was saying that on fifth avenue coming back that it was uphill i don't remember that being uphill at all what's where what mile are we talking it's about 20 20 through 23 oh, or something yeah, yeah. that's a, solidly uphill. you're literally just on a is climb. it really i felt like it was an uphill once you got off the bridge at 16 16 miles you go up that big road and i felt like the whole thing was a climb up into the bronx i just don't remember that it was like a slow grad not even that gradual kind of no it was a hill yeah okay all right it was <laughs> I mean, disgusting and there was that big tv at the top of the hill yeah i didn't know i honestly don't i thought that was flat the whole way no. but which is a good thing in my head i guess i just yeah. didn't maybe i was just like looking at the ground the whole time and not thinking about it i don't know i think some people think Central Park is hilly, and I actually thought that part that was... I thought was hilly. See, I thought that was a down... Like, that felt downhill to me. I was like, okay, it was a long down we're almost one, there. At one point. Yeah. It was fun, though. The crowds were amazing. Dripping with sweat. Yeah. Dripping. Dude, I think the favorite part of that race for me was peeing in that porta potty Because I had to go so bad for 10 miles, and then when I finally went, it, uh, it felt like... Oh, we saw you. I took a whole backpack of weight off me. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. That's when I felt really good when I was when I was like, I think I'm going to go ahead because it felt so much better. Yeah, the uh, we got to the after afterwards, the after party. I ended up seeing who did I end up seeing on the road? And um, Emily Sisson. Yeah, Emily Sisson. I end up stopping her and be like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a restraining order against you. (laughs) Pretty much. I was like, my wife. (laughs) <laughs> we're big fans <laughs> i was basically talk, talking in one and one you were with sentences. you were with Jarrett. yeah so she thought Jarrett, two were together. you know how miserable he was <laughs> yeah Jarrett looked like his soul well, left him for good as soon as he saw her and knew that she was you know somebody he uh, perked up for like that <laughs> three minutes that we were talking to her and then as soon as she left he was like i gotta get back to the hotel I tell you what next time if we do it again i'm putting a credit card in my back pocket because the whole walk back with megan and brandon we were just passing all these restaurants and we were like let's just go in and get a drink uh, and sit but none of us had anything <laughs> so, all right no, so next time yeah yeah the vip experience was worth it i i guess i'll do it again but i really am i'm gonna the whole thing i'm gonna do on hills like there's i'm gonna run up to towson or something every every weekend i like it 
You can run the parking garage. That's a good one. That would be good for 26 miles. Um, yeah, so that was amazing. And then we kind of thought the year was over, but we threw in a couple more stuff. The running oh, event. Oh, the running event. Yeah. Yeah. That was, as I mean, we did a whole recap yeah. of that. We don't have to rehash it, but yeah, it was just always a whirlwind of things going on. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that was a little bit of a disappointment this year was the uh, Brooks party wasn't as long as it has yeah, been in the past. Yeah, threw me off because I thought it was, like it messed with my head because I thought I was misremembering it going till 2 a.m. or something like that or 1 a.m. and it ended at like 11 or something. Yeah. yeah they only Dude, played for a couple What's hours. the deal now with bars closing at like 11 o'clock? It's, we found a bar that stayed open till 2, but that's like finding a, what do you call it, diamond in the rough or whatever in 2022. I feel like every, I've gone to so many places where like, oh, yeah, we're closing in 15 minutes. I'm like, it's 1130. That is weird. Okay, this probably hasn't happened to you at all. I was like, I haven't yeah. gone out enough. Uh, to I'm usually this. asleep by yeah. nine, but this sounds amazing. <laughs> but <laughs> oh I, I, back in the day, you could just go anywhere and it's just assume they're open until two. I think it's part of the whole service industry. It's hard to find you know, people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what this was, but I remember at a certain point in the night, they started playing like the hit songs. Yeah. And I was like, it's too early for this. Like, uh, right. it's too early. And then it was like, <coughs> oh. No, they're wrapping this it. in a yeah. half an hour. Like they're playing, um, Mr. Brightside. Yeah, that was early. That hey, was, that's what I'm saying. I was like, it's too early. Oh. But what's the sugar? We're going out swinging. They were playing. Yeah. I was like, that's thing. That's their last song. Yeah. And then we did the Celtic Solstice five k or five miler and party. You say Celtic about. or Celtic? Celtic. Oh, whoops. Celtic. This this is a problem. It is Celtic, but I have this problem because it's the Boston Celtics, which is dumb. Well, it would sound worse if it was a Boston Celtics, but that's what it should be. Yeah, well, let's figure out what the who makes the rules. It's Thames, no. Thames. But that seems Thames. like a word that's so big in the lexicon of what, Irish people that you should <laughs> that where the Celtics are. Yeah, Celts. Yeah. Celts. Yeah, that's why there's yeah. a. Uh, clover as a logo yeah that and they need to come to a firm decision on that how did the irish people claim the clover because that's pretty much everywhere this is how bored i was as a kid growing up i would just sit in the backyard for hours looking for four leaf clovers just going through the whole backyard I found some and then just put them <laughs> in wax paper and then lose them in a couple of weeks what a childhood yeah, yeah. it's pretty thrilling stuff <laughs> So Celtic, so that was like last week. Yeah, we already talked about it last week. So, but that was our kind of the end of the year. That's yeah, pretty much. It do you know it's been fun for me? It has nothing to do with running. It's putting out these collabs and watching them disappear. Yeah. And I did. For those of you who didn't get in on the Tracksmith sweatshirt, I have fingers crossed that we're going to be able to do another run of those. So it's also going to be limited. They just we just can't do huge numbers in in these uh, projects, but um, we will probably put out another couple hundred if we are able to. And so stay tuned for that. And then also, shouldn't you be getting geeked up for Winter Grit at this point? Yeah, it's, when does this come out? You can still sign up. Yeah, next Friday. You can still sign up. You have like a day 30th. left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I guess we didn't cover our favorite guests and stuff this you year. You get that beanie. No. They were all our favorites. Yeah. They are war, but I do love when we can get somebody to come into the office, it makes it even better. Yeah. It's, it's so like, all the people we loved, God, we'd love to have you here at the office. So if we can figure out how to do more of that this year and maybe film it a little bit better, um, like Mike Wardy and coming in, Sharon Lochetti, the winner of the New York City Marathon. His space Under Armour athlete. Yeah, and uh, Aaron Azar came in. I even think we had Ben Johnson. Was That, that oh, yeah. was during the summer grit party, right, yeah. that he came in? Some of your favorite, according to numbers. Yeah, so uh, top podcast. one is Kira D'Amato. Second would be Ben Johnson, and then third is Chris Ford. Think about that, people. Of our podcast downloads, you just got the top three, Kira D'Amato, Ben Johnson, and Chris Ford. Forty, what do you think of that? He's probably geeking out right now. Yeah, he's probably losing his mind. Yeah, he probably just like turned into a puddle there over in Britain. Just <laughs> creeped himself in a Union Jack, yeah. fully naked. Okay. He's like, oh, brilliant, legend, Stre brilliant. Streaking around the River Thames or Thames. <laughs> I'm number one. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 
I, that's that's on my British accent too. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. But yeah, congratulations to our top three. Anything else? Goals for 2023? Do we, do we talk about that now or maybe see it for the New Year's? Ooh, we got some exciting news coming out for uh, early in the year. I guess we should just save it for the first week of the yeah. year. But we got some exciting news coming out, something that we've been, all been working on for a while now. Oh, I was we, trying to think of what that was. Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Okay. Yeah, it took me a minute, too. Um, like, I'm we? super stoked. It's Just consider us going from Believe in the Run. I think at this point we're like 2.0. And we're not beta 2.0 when this one we're comes out. <laughs> well, I guess we probably are like at 2.5 because I would say like solo days that would be like the ridge the beta, and then yeah, and then May coming on kind of upped it up again. And Robbie coming on, we start getting that heat shield burning, heat and shield. then um, yeah, and this is just going to take us to another level. And uh, we appreciate your support, and we couldn't do this without you. So thank you for being part of. I forgot to mention Brandon and stuff that in too, because that was also a yeah, yeah. another click in the, yeah click in the versions. Yeah, well, Brandon, I, Jared. I mean, we could throw in there. That was a down, that, we went back to beta on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I, yeah, he weighed us down. Um, just kidding, dude. But there's all. I mean, uh, we could go through every one of our reviewers that helps us review as well. I mean, there's just so many people that are helping us to bring this content to you and to do some fun stuff. We can't thank everyone enough. We thank our partners like New Balance, Asics, Puma. I mean, who else have we worked Under with Armour. this year? Under Armour. Solomon. Solomon. I mean, everybody. And even the brands that we don't actually do projects with that we test and review the shoes. Thank you for including us in your stuff. We feel like we lived a really blessed life and uh, hopefully can continue to deliver fun and engaging content for you in 2023 yep and thanks for listening couldn't do it without you it's still insane to me that there's thousands of people who put our voices in your ears each week like some that sort of wild. masochistic weirdos <laughs> i know in this office robbie wears uh the earplugs just to not hear us. yeah i'd like give yeah if anyone uh is a noise canceling headphone company out there hit me up like um but anyways i think it's pretty amazing we've that yeah that there's that many runners that are into it yeah. and i think it'll be even better 2023 yeah and here's to megan getting her otq oh lord Ooh, throwing that out there already i, I like am. it all right done yeah right okay on that note <laughs> we out uh yeah i guess just thanks again to everyone we really appreciate you guys and we will be back with you we hope you have a happy new year Thanks for everybody again listening, and thanks to Brandon for producing. Thanks to all of our reviewers for helping us get the content out. Thanks to the brands for letting us be part of everything, and thanks to Robbie and Megan for being such good partners on this podcast. Bye. Bye. Say bye to your mom. Say hi, yeah. Hi, mom. Bye, mom. Bye, mom.